Scaffold or scaffolding is a commonly used temporary structure for a wide range of construction work. However, safety standards need to be followed to allow scaffolding to be functional and provide workers with a safe environment to work. The factories and machinery, building operations and works of engineering construction safety regulations 1986 defines scaffold as any temporary provided structure which enables persons to obtain access to or which enables materials to be taken to any place at which such work is performed and includes any working platform, gangway, skip, ladder or step ladder which does not form part of such structure together with any guardrail, tour board or other safeguards and all fixing but does not include a lifting appliance or a lifting machine or a structure used merely to support such an appliance or such a machinery as to support other plant or equipment. Operational use of scaffolds falls under the Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994 and its regulations and the Factories and Machinery Act 1967 and its regulations, especially Part 10 of the Factories and Machinery, Building Operations and Works of Engineering Construction, Safety Regulations 1986. Under the same law, the erection of scaffold is subject to the following requirements. Design and drawing of scaffold needs to be approved if every metal tube scaffold exceeding 40 meters in height and every other scaffold exceeding 15 meters in height shall be constructed in accordance with the design and drawings of a professional engineer. A copy of the design must be submitted to DOSH. A designated person needs to be appointed to supervise the erection of scaffold. A working platform on a scaffold structure from which a person is liable to fall more than 3 meters requires to be provided with the guardrails and tow boards. To ensure the scaffold structure is in proper working condition, the designated person needs to inspect the scaffold every 7 days or after exposure to adverse weather condition for signs of fatigue, displacement and stability of the scaffold. The inspected scaffold is then tagged to indicate whether it is safe for use. Every inspection needs to be logged with the records available at the work site at any time. Common scaffolding hazards caused by improper assembly may lead to death or injury to worker falling from height, death or injury caused by falling object from scaffold, electric shock, Contact with overhead line through scaffold. Datho engineer Dr. Johari Basri, Director General of the Department of Occupational Safety in Health Malaysia, addressing issues of scaffold safety. Issue that should be given immediate attention by the industry include the design of the whole structure. It should be based on the approved standard, like the Malaysian standard. Secondly, the use of the component that often in good order, that is not then corrosion and so on. The use of couplers, proper fixing and also the use of platform, proper platform so that workers have access to it, as well as the need to have a inspection from time to time to look at the integrity of the components as well as the, the whole structure per se. And for this, you need to have engaged qualified scaffolders. And for your information, only Malaysian citizen. I would like to encourage the construction industry to adopt the approach of self-regulation. Because there's no way for the government to supervise and monitor all the projects within the industry. So, it is the responsibility or the employer, as well as the employee, to ensure safe erection of the structure, the use of good components, adequate supervision by the supervisor and also inspectors, and finally, taking into consideration hazard while during the erection or while working. For example, yeah, it might problem or issue pretending to falling over while you are working, that's why you need some barrier to prevent falling from height as well as 
the possibility of falling object from height eh, on your head, on your hand or part of your body that can cause injury. So, as far as the department is concerned, we would like to urge the industry, player, employer, workers, as well as the inspectors to work together in ensuring that the work related to scaffold and work, working platform could be carried out safely and prevent injury of death to the workers. Types of scaffolding Tubular scaffolding Modular scaffolding Frame scaffolding Tubular scaffolding This is a multitude of systems whereby various metal, steel or aluminium alloy components are linked together, usually without the aid of usual couplers, to provide a structure which would replace a normal tube and fittings scaffold. Modular scaffolding a multi-purpose scaffold system where components can be fit together simply and quickly. With its node point locking principle, it makes erection faster. The locking device is formed by a fixed bottom where the blade ends are located and sliding top cup, which secures the component by a hammer blow. Frame scaffolding. Fabricated frame scaffolds are the most common type of scaffold because they are versatile, economical and easy to use. They are frequently used in one or two tiers by residential contractors, painters, etc. But fabricated frames can also be stacked several stories high for use on large-scale construction jobs. Frame Scaffold the frame scaffold is one of the most commonly used scaffolds in the Malaysian construction industry. Let us look at the components of the frame scaffold. Main frame The main frame consists of two standards and transom, welded together with latch pins forming the major form of the scaffold. Cross brace This is used to connect main frames into a structure. The cross brace is joined in a hinge in the middle, with both ends flattened and drilled for insertion of latch pins, holding the two frames together. Joint pin. It is used for connecting the main frame vertically. Arm lock. Is a safety measure to prevent the main frame from being disconnected or dislodged from the frames. Base plate. Adjustable base plate. The advantage of this type of base plate is that it allows for the adjustment of the height of the frame structure in order to make the main frames uniform when the supporting structure or ground is not level. Swivel clamp to lock the rails in place. Ladder for moving between different levels of the scaffold structure. Working platform serves as a platform for workers to work from. Guardrail to prevent workers falling from heights. Toe board prevents persons, tools or materials from falling off the working platform. Wall tie an additional part of the scaffold extension for the purpose of securing the scaffold structure to the existing building. Racker these are additional supports consisting of pipes erected at a 45 degree angle to prevent scaffold from toppling over. Steps to assemble the frame scaffold 1. Jack base Jack bases are to be placed on a firm base or foundation. The jack bases are to be positioned at the dimensions of the open end frame. 2. Open end frame Insert the open end frame firmly into the jack bases. 3. Cross brace Cross brace is to be diagonally snapped into the spring snap locks attached to the frame. 4. Working platform Attach the working platform to the scaffold and ensure the locking pin is secure 
once the position for the working platform is determined. 5. Ladder Before attaching the ladder, attach swivel clamp at the bottom vertical scaffold to hold the brace for attaching the ladder. Once the brace is ready, place the ladder and ensure the locking pin is in place. 6. Joint pin To erect the second level of scaffold, place the joint pin into the open end frame. Once the frame is in place, install the cross brace. 7. Arm lock Place the arm lock to interlock the bottom frame to the top frame. 8. Swivel clamp Attach the swivel clamp to the vertical frame as a base to attach the guardrail. 9. Guardrail the guardrail is then attached in place by tightening the swivel clamp. This is to prevent workers from falling off the scaffold. 10. Tow board Tow board is installed just beside the working platform to prevent workers or objects from slipping off the working platform. Step 2 is repeated until the scaffold achieves the desired height and width. 11. Racker a racker is installed at a 45 degree angle using the guardrail and swivel clamp to prevent the scaffold from tilting over. 12. Wall tie The wall tie is used with the swivel clamp to secure the scaffold to the building to prevent any tilting. Safety guidelines and checklist Things to check Firm base or foundation Components in good condition, not crooked, bent or damaged. Proper assembly. No missing parts, pins, cross braces. No rusty components. Tagging red and green. Red scaff tag indicates that the scaffold is not safe for use by anyone. Green scaff tag indicates that the scaffold is complete and is safe for use at the time of inspection. A green scaff tag is valid for one week. Common scaffolding failure is caused by poor scaffolding design or assembly, not following erection procedures, foundation failure, material fatigue, overloading, poor inspection record, erected for non-intended use. Master Builder Association Malaysia continuously seeks ways to improve safety and health in the construction industry towards achieving zero accidents. We will continue to work with government bodies and policy makers to further bring forth recommendations for the betterment of the industry.